how we might be able to uh, use this software to make our lives a little easier. Uh, first of all, you'll notice that I have used the information that is in your textbook on page 179, and I have already filled out the tasks from uh, 1 to 8. Um, I also have put in the duration times. Now, you can put in the duration times either in days or weeks, hours, minutes, um, <clears throat> even months. So you can put it in in different, um, different units. So let's just start looking at how we might create uh, the, the picture of our project, how we might be able to create that Gantt chart of our project to show us which um, items have to come first, which are the predecessors, what things we might be able to do in parallel with each other. So we're going to take the information from your book, and the way we would do this is we would, first, we would not put anything for task one, simply because it is the starting task and there's no reason for it to have um, any predecessors. So for uh, the next task, task B, we would just simply type in a one and uh, we would enter that one. And so now you can look over here to the side and you can see that um, we're showing that that task is now related. So let's go back in and let's complete the rest. Okay, so for task uh, C, B is the predecessor. And for D, B is the predecessor. For E, um, B is also the predecessor. You notice that I'm using the numbers here rather than the task. If you look out to the side, you'll see the numbers that I'm using. Okay, so we get down to uh, line six, which is task F. And we see that it has two predecessors. It has both C and D as a predecessor. So we're gonna type in three comma four and enter. All right, so let's have a look at that and see what that looks like. See right here, and then let's just scroll on over, and we see that they merge. This activity right here, this is called a burst activity, because as we come out of that activity, we have three activities that follow it. Over here, where we have the two activities coming together, that's called a merge activity. So let's go back and finish up our predecessors. Okay, so for line seven, which is activity G, the predecessor is line four, which is D. And then for uh, line eight, activity H, we have another merge activity, and that is five comma seven. All right, so there we go. So now what we have done is we have created a graphical depiction of our project and we can look at it and we can determine which are our ending activities. And in this case, it seems that we have two ending activities right here. You see there's nothing that comes after them. So uh, that would be activity uh, F and activity H. Okay, so this has been a real simple project and, and we've looked at it in terms of um, you know, what, how you would create the Gantt chart, but let's start giving it some practical application, okay? A, B, C, D, E doesn't mean a lot to us. So let's just look over here at another project that I have created. And we're gonna call it a project, even though it may be routine work for some of us, and that is making a pot of coffee. We're gonna say that we have two resources here. We have uh, Pam and Charles, and Pam and Charles are going to work together to make a pot of coffee. So the first thing that we would wanna do is we would want to begin to identify our activities that are related. Well, if we look at these activities, we can get water and we can remove the filter basket and we could do that simultaneously, couldn't we? So those are parallel activities. And since we have two resources, Pam and Charles, we don't necessarily have to uh, connect those. Those could be, both be starting activities. But when we begin to look down here, then we see that placing the filter, that is related to removing the filter basket. So we would want to relate that activity back up to um, number two, which is removing the filter basket. Okay, so we would put in a two right here. 
uh, after we removed the basket and we placed the filter in it, then we'd want to put the coffee in the filter. So we would relate that back to that activity, which is three. Now we want to pour the water into the containment area. Well, that's not really related to these three, is it? So it's more related to getting the water. So that is going to be the activity that is related. So we would put one in here. Okay, so once we have finished with activity four and activity five, then we can turn on the coffee pot. So we need to put two in here. So we're going to put in four comma five. All right, so now we're going to let the coffee brew and we want to get a cup of coffee. So once the pot is on and it's completed, then uh, seven would follow six. Well, we want to get a spoon and we want to put sugar in the coffee. So we, after we get our coffee poured, then, uh, uh, or after we get our cup, then we could put, get our spoon also. We could get our spoon at the same time that we get our coffee pot. So that would also follow six because they are, um, we have two resources and we can use them both. So there we go. All right, so now the person with the spoon is going to get the sugar and put it in the coffee cup. All right, so that's going to be related to both of these activities. So we have another merge activity. So we would put in eight comma nine. Oh, sorry, it should have been seven comma eight. That's an easy mistake to make, so you want to be careful of that, but you will get that error message if you do make that mistake, so uh, don't let it worry you. All right, so now we want to pour the coffee in the cup. We have our sugar in, and we've got our spoon, so that activity can follow um, number nine. After we get the coffee in the cup, then we want to stir the coffee. So that would follow activity 10. So we've just created a, um, a, a Gantt chart for getting a cup of coffee. Well now, let's go back in and let's say that we need to identify our resources. We can easily do that. We said we have two resources. We have Pam and Charles. Let's say that Pam went and got the water. We would enter Pam here. Do you see Pam?